What up my video creeps? As promised, we're going to be continuing along reviewing the Child's Play series. And on today, such a wonderful day, we will be going over the movie Child's Play 2. And I told you guys I had a lot to say about it. So let's get right into it. Child's Play 2 is the sequel to Child's Play 1. No. This time being directed by John Lafia instead of Tom Holland, but was written by Don Mancini, much like the first. Alex Vincent comes back to reprise his role as Andy, and Brad Dourif returns as well to do the voice of Chucky. And the opening of this movie is perfect. The very first thing that you see is Chucky's eye. And then it zooms out and you see his burned to a crisp head from part one. And it looks like it's being analyzed. What an awesome way to open up a movie. The makers at PlayPal somehow were able to get the burned remains of the good guy doll from part one. And they're reconstructing it in order to prove that nothing was ever wrong with the doll to begin with. But upon looking at this doll, there's stuff wrong with it. Like, I don't know if you've ever looked at a good guy's teeth, but it's just like a plastic white thing. This doll has teeth, like actual rows of teeth. And no one on the reconstruction team was like, why does this doll have human teeth? That's funny. Also, something that they don't explain is how they even got this doll. In Bride of Chucky, we see that, like, Tiffany had to go and, like, seduce a cop. The cop had to steal it from an evidence locker. I guess investigations in the 1990s were kind of like, Detective, we found a pool of the killer's blood in that hallway. He would just be like, hmm, gross. We get to see Andy Barkley and how he's doing two years later. And Andy's father is dead, and now his mom is like cuckoo insane. The cops didn't corroborate her story, so they sent her to like the nut house. So Andy is in foster care, and he's seeing a therapist. He's this bad man who got inside my good guy doll, so he wouldn't have to go to hell. And even two years later, we see that Andy is dealing with the psychological trauma that he lived through in part one. Which was a good call. I wouldn't have liked to see Andy all hunky-dory, life is good. The Ninja Turtles tried to kill you, dude. We meet Phil and Diane, who are foster parents who are interested in taking Andy on. And right from the jump, Phil is like... Are we even qualified to take care of a boy like this? Ah, fucking out of this kid. Uh, but Joanne, beautiful, beautiful Joanne, is like, no, no, we can do this. We can handle this. <laughs> Isn't that cute? But it's wrong! The sweet and sour in this relationship is ridiculous to me. Like, Phil, I can't stand the whole movie long. And like, Diane, I like want her to like breastfeed me. But nonetheless, they take Andy, and on the car ride home, they're trying to get to know him. So, Andy, what do you like to eat? All kinds of things. Turns out, if Chucky really wanted to get Andy, all he needed to do was fix him a plate of chocolate and eggs. But in the middle of this interaction, a truck cuts them off, and when Andy looks up, he sees that it's actually a Play Pals truck. Which I think is really smart writing. And more than once you see Don Mancini at his best when it comes to things like that. Some people might not appreciate it, I do. Andy finally gets back to Phil and Diane's house, and it is the least child-friendly house I have ever seen in my life. I would destroy everything in that house. They make mention that they've been doing this with kids for a really long time. Maybe put your glassware away. Andy, in a very non-threatening way, goes up to a porcelain clown that he sees. And immediately, Phil is like, hey. We don't do that here. We learn that Joanne is barren, and that's why they take on these kids. 
and they decide to take Andy to his room. On their way to Andy's room, we meet Kyle, another foster kid that Diane and Phil are taking care of. But Kyle doesn't give a fuck. I'm going to break everything that you own. She's smoking in her room. She hasn't unpacked her bags. She's like, I'm 18 in a month. Suck my dick. Joanne says that if Phil catches her smoking in the house again, then he will murder her with a gun. But what I find most distracting about this scene is Joanne's brooch. I mean, it's nice, but distracting. We head back over to Play Pals, where the big boss's assistant takes Chucky and puts him in his car. If I was a cop and I stopped this car on the street, it'd be like, what's going on with all these toys back here? It's like he's trying to lure kids into his car. But it turns out that he's not a pedophile at all. In fact, he's quite the pimp daddy. He picks up his phone and starts calling his, like, sweetheart. And one of the most quotable lines in any Chucky movie I've ever seen is said. Hello, Gabrielle, I guess who? <laughs> That's right. The vodka. Oh, the vodka. Of course I remember the vodka. Two-week anniversary. Think I forget the vodka. I know what that does to you. Two-week anniversary. I know what that vodka does to you. He knows what he's doing, dating an alcoholic. But oh no, he didn't get the vodka. So he has to go to a store where they deny him. And in that time, Chucky is able to pick up the phone and get Andy's information. How the fuck did he get Andy's information? This is 1990. There's no internet. His phone wasn't even like a flip thing. It was like attached to a car. Chucky literally just picked up a phone, called the right foster care, and was able to get all of his information. I know everything! When the assistant gets back to the car, Chucky attacks him and makes him drive him super close to where Andy is staying. He throws a bag over his face and suffocates him, and Chucky is off to get Andy. And it's kind of easy, too. Phil and Joanne, they don't even lock their door. Like, Chucky didn't even break into their house. He just, like, opened the door. You would think with small kids in the house, they would take these precautions. But no, maybe that's why you're barren, Joanne. <laughs> Earlier in the movie, we see that there is a second good guy doll, who is a normal good guy doll named Tommy, that Chucky is able to get in and swap places with. He busts open his face in a miraculous way, and then buries him in the backyard. And that scene is just chilling. Seen Chucky burying Tommy while Chucky is just laughing. <laughs> it's an effective scene. Chucky heads back into the house, and one of the scariest Chucky moments, in my opinion, there's a shot with him just standing at the bottom of the stairs. In an effort to not shit where he sleeps, Andy decides that he is going to befriend the Tommy doll. But unbeknownst to him, Tommy has been switched out with Chucky last night. That sneaky son of a bitch! Andy is hanging and banging with this Chucky doll all day long. But unfortunately, at night, Chucky's not trying to waste any time makes his move, ties up Andy, and reveals that he is the actual Chucky. Did you miss me, Andy? I sure missed you. I told you. We were gonna be friends to the end. And now, it's time to play. He gets halfway through his chant before he is interrupted by Kyle, who is sneaking in through Andy's window, cause she a badass, y'all, and inadvertently saves Andy. But now Andy is back on his bullshit. It's Chucky! I told you he'd find me! Tried to take over my soul! Andy, calm down. We know. We know, Andy. We've heard it all before. And we still don't believe you. The next morning, Kyle and Andy are walking to school, but Andy is paranoid as hell. He knows what's around the corner waiting for him. Look at the flicker there is! Look at the flicker there is! But looking out for Chucky, 
He had no idea to look out for Buzz. This prick kid starts picking on Andy from the minute he sees him. He shoves him on a bus. He's fucking with him in class. Sooner or later, repent. And ultimately gets him in trouble in school and lands Andy in detention. Chucky actually follows him to school and is the one that gets him detention. Buzz just made him a distraction, really. But the point is, Andy gets detention. And in a weird heroic stance for every child who watches this movie, Chucky kills the teacher. You've been very naughty, Miss Kettlebell. <gasps> and it's such a good kill, too! My ultimate NECA figure comes with a ruler because of how tight this death was. Andy is able to run away and get back to the house, but somehow Chucky beats him there, and Andy decides, you know what, enough is enough. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna kill Chucky. He grabs a turkey carver and heads into the basement where he's gonna end this shit. But Phil hears what's going on and decides that he's gonna go and investigate. But Chucky's not about that Snoopy business. So he takes a fish hook and grabs him by the leg. And before snapping his neck, Chucky throws out that one line. How's it hanging, Phil? Let's the fish hook go, and he dies. This is the final nail in the coffin for Joanne. She starts packing up Andy's stuff, and she decides that she's sending him back to foster care. Kyle sees the Chucky doll and decides that she's gonna just throw it in the garbage. That thing sucks. She goes to sit on the swing for a smoke and swing. And as she's kicking up dirt, she finds the original Tommy ball. She runs back to the garbage can and sees that Chucky is no longer there and she becomes wise to the situation. She goes upstairs to tell Joanne about what she found but oh no, Joanne is already dead. I feel like I heard once that that actually was a whole scene that was filmed, but it got cut out of the movie. If anyone knows, let me know below, because I'd, I'd like some clarification on that. Nonetheless, Kyle finds Joanne, sits on the bed in shock, and Chucky attacks her. They go back and forth, but ultimately Chucky gets the overhand on her. And much like the boss's assistant in the beginning of this movie, Chucky relies on Kyle for an Uber. And this car scene is, I feel, where you really start to see Chucky's personality come out. It's a glimpse into what we're gonna start getting from Chucky going forward. Step on it! What's the rush? If I don't get out of this body soon, I'll be trapped in here! What are you looking at? His snarky remarks, his funny little one-liners. For all my homies back in the day watching Child's Play 2 on VHS, remember when they talk about how like Chucky bleeds, but like nothing comes out of his nose? I actually have the Blu-ray now, and you can see the blood come out of his nose. People who have always seen it on Blu-ray don't know what I'm talking about, but people who watched it on VHS, you know. They go to the foster care house, and Chucky is able to get his hands on Andy. They escape away from Kyle, but Kyle gets in a car and she starts chasing after them, leading them to the grand finale of this film, The Toy Factory. Chucky knocks Andy out and begins to perform the ritual. But it is too late. Chucky is now officially a human in the doll body. He can't get out. So he decides, fuck it, I'm just gonna kill Andy. I'm not even gonna deal with this anymore. Kyle is able to get into the toy factory and pushes a bunch of good guy dolls onto Chucky, allowing Andy to get up and escape. And they run through this paranoia maze of good guy dolls. And you're right there with them. This is not a good feeling scene. And Chucky is on their tail every turn. Eventually, they're able to close a gate behind them, trapping Chucky's hand underneath. And so he has to, like, rip his hand off. And Knife Hand Chucky is born. One of the cooler renditions of Chucky I think we've ever seen. 
From this point on, Chucky just goes through it. They fight for their life in this movie. Quit playing. Robert. I didn't do this stuff. This is not me, y'all. I'm fighting for my life. And they do everything that they can. They staple his dick. <laughs> They put him in a machine where he's gonna get, you know, mutilated. He's able to cut off his bottom half and attach himself to like a wheel cart. You know what I'm gonna do to you? I'm gonna cut off your legs too. So Andy blasts him with molten hot plastic. Still not enough to get this guy to die. He comes back to life and he's so gross looking and like, Mwah. It's a good one up from part one where he's like burned and gross looking. I wish they kept doing that in every film. But Kyle grabs a hose that is just spewing hydrogen and puts it in Chucky's mouth. His head widens, ultimately exploding. And then Chucky is finally dead for another chapter in the Child's Play series. I shouldn't need to answer the question, do I like this movie, because I love this movie. When it comes to all of horror, it is in my top five. The things I don't like about this movie all stem from the fact that I want more of this movie. Like I don't like that there's never been a release of Child's Play 2 with a commentary or extra special features. Yeah, you can go on YouTube and find stuff from it. But there's never been an official release with all of these things on there and it just makes me cry and sad all day long the way they end this movie too is like a cowboy film they leave the factory and andy is like where are we going home where's home andy i have no idea then they ride off into the sunset i would have liked part three to go with that storyline Maybe now they're on the run. Maybe now since Kyle is 18, she can foster Andy. But alas, that is not what happens in part three. And if you want to know what happens in part three, make sure that you subscribe and ring the bell. That way you know when my review for Child's Play 3 is up. That's gonna be it for this review. Thank you so much for staying till the end of the video. Peace out, video creeps.